first question, if Q is 120 joules and temperature is 350 Kelvin, what's the change in entropy? Oh, look, another thing we haven't talked about yet. This we may or may not have on the next test. I don't think I'm going to get to this in, in lecture on Friday, so it would probably be on the final exam only. So entropy, what is entropy? Um, it's order. Oh. Okay, we learn oftentimes in, in like our high school class that entropy the measurement of disorder. What does that mean? Like how much it interacts with stuff another system. Mm -hmm. Remember what we talked about on Tuesday, the end of the lecture, I even gave you the equation for entropy. The equation for entropy is S is equal to K times the natural log. And I use the symbol omega. Remember you said that's omega mm -hmm. or that's omega too, where omega is the number of microstates. I missed a AT in there. In the macro state. So for our typical thermodynamics, the macro state is defined as the pressure volume temperature n combination. So like how many different ways you can arrange the particles to have the same pressure volume temperature and number of moles. And that that's the technical calculation for it. For your class, actually for both classes, we'll use this equation. But this problem is dealing with it in a different way. It's, it's to me important to people to actually understand what entropy means and not just have a statement that they throw out there and don't really understand what it means, amount of disorder. This really, the number of microstates in the macrostate is a probability number. The higher the number of microstates in the macrostate, the more likely it is. Because all the microstates, if they have the same pressure, volume, temperature, and N, they're all the same energy. And so they're all equally probable so the state that has the most microstates is the most probable state. And so this is really proportional to, it's not equal to, but it's proportional to the probability of the state. That is, how likely is it to be in this state? The higher the likelihood of being in that state, the more likely it is to be in that state. That's what the second, that's another statement of the second law. Another statement of the second law is that every transition moves toward an equal or greater entropy of the universe, which translates into every transition moves into a more likely outcome. It doesn't move to the less likely outcomes, it moves to the most likely outcome. It seems like counterintuitive of that statement, like, like entropy disorder. So you would think like it. Well, the reason we use that is you take something like a, um, a bunch of bricks. And if you have all the bricks in the wall, that's ordered. Now, there's lots of different ways you can rearrange the bricks and have a wall, right? You could exchange these two, and you still have the same basic wall. But there's, not, there's a finite number of ways you can do that. If you have a pile of bricks... There's a lot more ways you can rearrange the bricks and have the same pile of bricks. And so they say, ah, there's more order in the wall, less order in the pile. And hence, the second law says that the bricks are more likely to fall into the pile than they are to fall into a wall. You know, they fell down and look, they formed a wall. We know that's not going to happen because of our experience. The second law says it's not going to happen because it's less probable. Most people stop at saying, because it's higher entropy and don't think about, oh, well, it's because it's less probable. You have to go. Yes. I will watch the video. I will watch the video. <laughs> okay. Thank have a good you. day, nice. So what I'm going to do now is shift into how we're going to solve this. So this is what entropy is. Change in entropy, or in your class, we'll learn to do this with calculus, is equal to <coughs> Q over temperature. Now, if the temperature is changing, that's a bit of a problem. In your class, we'll put ds is equal to dq over t. 
now we can deal with it. <laughs> but for the non-calculus class, we just have to stick with that. And notice the delta became a D here, and there's no delta there, and it became a D. That's because heat is already a transfer. And in fact, if you want to be all careful, you put a little slash there because it's a different idea. So we're going to work with this one for the problem because we have a constant temperature. If Q is 120 joules and T is 350, what's the change in entropy? <laughs> Don't have to know much. Um. Q is? 230? No, Q, Q is? is 120. 120 joules. So I just replaced Q with 120 joules. Mm -hmm. And temperature is um, 350. Okay, and because this is temperature alone, whoops, I put K because I was thinking, it has to be in Kelvins. Mm -hmm. It's only if it's a change that we can use Celsius. So you just pop that in the old calculator, and that gives you the change in entropy for this. Um, if Q is positive, then your delta S is positive. If Q is negative, your delta S is negative. So if heat flows in, entropy goes up. Heat flows out, entropy goes down. It's like if heat flows in, then it's positive. If heat flows in, then the change in entropy is positive. Now, last thing to note on this, the units, joules over kelvins. A joule over kelvin is the unit for entropy. And I'm just going to cheat. Their answer is 0 0.343. Because <laughs> there's no way this is wrong. It's too simple. And of course, you can see that it's going to be real close to one third. If it was 12 over 360, it'd be 0.3333. So we know that's got to be right. So that was pretty simple. Hmm. Okay, the next one is something that I, well, it's something akin to the dice problem that I abbreviated in class on Tuesday. This is a really good one for entropy. I am going to do this one with relish. Because this one here, make sure you understand what the microstates, macrostates <coughs> is. Construct a table showing the microstates and all of the individual or macrostates and all the individual microstates for tossing six coins. Use the table as a guide. So I'm going to have six coins. If I have ten heads and zero tails, there's only one way to get that. Mm -hmm. And the one way of getting that is well, the one. You, you have 10 coins and it's going to be head, 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 right? That's the only way to get all heads. And tails will be likewise, mm -hmm. only one way of doing it. But if we go to these other ones, I don't, I'm not going to draw out 252 different variations. I'll just draw out one variation of five and five. Head, tail, tail, head, head, tail, head, tail, tail, head. There's one of the 252 variations. It has five heads, five tails. But there's a whole large number of these, right? And so you construct the table of that. What we often do is we make a graph. And we make a graph that has... Um, here would be, I'm just going to put number of heads. So it's going to go from 0 to 10. And on this, I will have number of microstates. So at 0, I have 10, right? Mm. And at 1... I have, oh, excuse me, at zero, I have one. So one is going to be down here. And at, oh, here's five. At five, I will have 252. So if that's 252, then that's like 200 and 100, or, well, 100 should be further down. I'm trying to get rid of that little tick there because that's the one that's, there we go. 
Okay, so if that's 200, 100 is about here. And 150 is about here. And this here is about 50. And so then I can put on the other ones. Four and six are going to be at 210. And then three and seven are at 120. And then two and eight are at 45. One is at 10, which we already talked about. Now I'm going to change color to show my data points so they're more clear. So I flipped the 10 coins. The chances of being out here is really low. Chance of being here is very high, right? And so, you know, we would say, well, when I flip the coins, realistically, I expect my outcome to be somewhere like in that box, mm -hmm. just because it's much more probable there than outside. Can mm -hmm. it come outside the box? Absolutely. It's just much more likely to be in the central portion. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the real guts of what's going on with entropy. This is the highest entropy because it's the highest number of states. If I had calculated the entropy for each one of these, I would have calculated, I'm going to erase this useless example of the microstates. Maybe. If I had done the entropies, I would have had natural log of 1 is 0. Natural log of 10, well, I actually have to put that. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, so just put in 10 natural log. Oh, nope, take that back. Two point three, okay. Now natural log of forty five. Three point eight. Natural log of one twenty. Four point seven eight. Well, four point eight is good enough for my work work here and natural log of 210 I missed one but it's okay that up. it's I missed two no. it's what um, 5.34 okay and natural log of 252. Okay, so we can look at these. Now, these are in terms of K, just to save us writing 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23, and hence all these numbers are really tiny. But we have the entropies of each one, and you see, uh huh, this one here is the highest entropy. So statistically, I expect it to be the most probable, I expect it to be the highest entropy. Now, how does this relate to something realistic? Realistically, how many particles do we have? You know, let's take this room. Is it something about a, like a fourth of a Google? Not a fourth, a fourth root. So, somewhere, let's say 10 to the 24 in this room, because okay. it's a much smaller room. So if we have 10 to the 24th particles, and for each particle, we have, you know, six different variables. The number of microstates is, is now on the order of 10 to the 25th. And if you do these calculations for how many different ways you can arrange them for different you know, pressure, volume, temperature, states, it turns out that if you put in that many numbers, 
instead of being a curve that looks like this pink one, well, let me finish. Well, yeah, let me finish the pink one. I only drew the stuff in the box, which is peaked, but mildly peaked. If we did it with 10 to the, let's say 25th coins, it would look like that, where I have greatly expanded the width of that peak. It basically looks like zero everywhere then jumps up to a huge number, comes back to basically zero. It's not really zero anywhere here, but compared to how big it is there, it might as well be. So the odds of being anywhere except for right there are approximately zero. The odds of being right here, approximately one. Hence our statement of the second law, that it goes to that state because that's the only one that has any finite probability. All the others are infinitesimal. So yeah, I love that aspect of it. Ah, shall we do another? Yeah, I think that was helpful. Okay. Oh, there's a whole bunch of questions. How many macro states are there? Well, how many macro states? Let, let's just go up to this and answer. How many different macro states were there? Does that mean five? Um, no, the, the macro states are the combinations of heads and tails, oh. like 10 and 0 is one so combination. Like, just add all of these. And the number of macro states. The number of macro states, not the number of micro states, but yeah, the number of macro. The total, thankfully. The and so we have this is one, two, okay. how many total? Um, well, no. There's one here, mm -hmm. one here, one here. Oh, how oh. How many total macro states do we have? Um, 11. 11. So we have 11 macro states. How many microstates? That's where you get out your calculator. Okay. Luckily, they've done that. Yes. One, zero, two, four microstates. Once again, I forgot to add. Now, I think the next one is probably going to be what's the probability of each? What percent chance is there of tossing five heads and one tail? Five heads and one tail. If you, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. We're not supposed to use this. We're supposed to simplify it down to six. So if we simplify this to six, we would have, that was just supposed to be a guide. Okay, so. If we have six, we could have six, zero, five, one, four, two, three, three, two, four, one, five, zero, six. So how many microstate or macro states was that? Okay, then microstates, how many ways can we get six heads and zero tails? How many ways can we get five heads and one tail? Two. Mm. It could be head, tail, 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 head, tail, tail, tail. I didn't say the right number of tails, but, or head, head, tail, head, 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 or head, 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 tail, head, head. Right. The, the one tail could be in any of the six. So it's actually six because you could have the first one as a head and all the rest are tails. The second one is a head and all the rest are tails. Third one is a head and all the rest are tails, etc. One through six. Now four and two. That means we could have, if we have the first one as a head, then we could have the second one as a head, or the third one, or the fourth one, or the fifth one, or the sixth one. So there's five of them with head as the first one. Okay, you don't look like you're convinced. The, the, this is, okay, so let's just do four, two. We could have, uh, okay, it's four heads. I'm going to do the tail first then. So we could have tail, tail, head, 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 head. All right, that's going up. <laughs> you can't see them on the screen. So that's one option. I could have tail, head, tail, head, head, head. 
or tail head head tail oops that last one was a head and I wrote tail or tail head 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 tail head or tail head 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 tail right so that was a total of one two three four five options where the first one is tail or I could have had the first one head and the second one tail So that's four options where I have tail as the second one. How many am I going to have with tail as the third one? Yes. Wait, there's no more. That's three. <laughs> So that's going to be three. How many are you going to have? Two. And? One. <laughs> okay. So how many total do I have in that case? Mm. Five plus four plus three plus two plus one. As you probably learned, you can do like five plus one is six, four plus two is six, and then plus three. So we have 12 plus three is 15. So we have 15 there. And then... By symmetry, this one's 15, this one's 6, and this one's 1. The only thing we have left is 3-3. Three, three. Well, 3-3 three, three is even more complicated because 3-3 three, three would have the option of tail, 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 head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, head, tail, tail, head, head, tail. So there's three with two tails but then we have tail head tail tail head tail head tail head tail tail head head tail tail this one we're only ready um five oh shoot <laughs> <laughs> that makes a difference <laughs> which means i should have had another one in here Thank you for finding that before I feel stupid. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten options. We had ten options that have tail as the first one. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have to go on down. To how many options we have with tails the second one and so on and we used to use a formula for this rather than counting them all out by hand yeah calculator function somewhere Oh, I only did. I only did two. That's. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't even do it right this time. Those confuse me too. <laughs> really Anyhow, um, you can see how the process is done to calculate all of them. And it, very quickly, you want to use the combinations or the permutations. I have to look it up. Um, equation rather than doing all these calculations. Um, but we did all of them, but this number. And so you can see, ah, oh, yes, you once again have the most probable is the center one. Um, <coughs> come on, player, there we go. What percentage chance is there of tossing five heads and one tail? 
Oh, how many microstates are there? There's 64 total microstates. Let's do this. We'll get the number from the answer they give us. There's 64 total. So that's 30, um, 44, so it must be 20 there. 30. Yeah, it's got to be right based on their numbers. And so then it asks, what percent chance is there of tossing five heads and one tail? So what's the likelihood of this? If I have six ways of getting in, there's a total of 64 options. Just divide. Yes, yeah, six divided by 64. So 9.375%. What about one divided by, let's, let's do all these, one divided by 64. Yeah. <laughs> it was point one point five sixty five. And fifteen just multiply it by fifteen. Twenty three point four three seven five. And finally divided by fifteen times twenty. 31.25. So there we have the percentages of each one of these coming up. So if you toss six coins, you know, there's a 31% rounding off chance that it's going to be three heads, three tails. And there's only a 1.6% chance that it's going to be all heads or all tails. So, I mean, if you toss it a hundred times, you expect it'll come up at least once, but you don't expect it to come up three times. Mm -hmm. It could come up a hundred times in a hundred. It's just really, really unlikely. And so that is, once again, that's what the second law is about. How much more likely are you to toss three heads, three tails than five and one? Well, Roughly four times, or not four, three and a half times. 31.25 divided by 9.37, or 20 divided by 6. Okay. 20 over 6 is equal to 10 over 3, which is 35, 33, 3. Mm -hmm. Look, he's way ahead of the game. Wow. <laughs> okay, so now moving on to a new problem, so you can be with us and understand. Uh, Right, Brittany? <laughs> <laughs> so going to your problem, what is the thermal efficiency of an engine? Can it ever be 100%? Why or why not? Yeah, there, there's always going to be some heat that's exhausted. And so because there's always heat exhausted, your efficiency can never be 100% efficient because efficiency is... And so I didn't even put it in there, but efficiency is equal to the work you get out divided by the heat you put in. And since work is equal to QH minus QC, that's equal QH minus QC over QH, or one minus QC over QH, because QC is always greater than zero, the efficiency is always less than one. Right, because you're always one minus something. <laughs> one minus something, it'll show up. One minus something is always, yeah, come on. You can like, use here and just sit over here, but you want to sit over here so you can stay. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. Brittany's right. It was not on the screen. Mm -hmm. I guess I wrote beside what we did before. So efficiency is the work you get out divided by the heat you put in. And because you always have exhaust heat, you can never have 100% efficiency. Mm 